challenges me personally as a dancer, as an educator, as a choreographer, uh, the personal sacrifice that I've made. Um, there's been a few. Uh, again, first, the reality that this isn't about a financial gain. This isn't a, about fame and fortune. It's about having a love for what I do. And I think any other director, choreographer, anyone in this field would agree with me. Uh, that Again, if you love what you do, everything else will follow. Uh, but one has to be content with the idea that you do have to. I think the biggest sacrifice is giving up a part of yourself and being unselfish uh, and willing to give to help someone else to get to where you are currently or beyond that. I think I realized that I wanted to be a dancer pretty, pretty early on. Um, I think about the age of 17 is when I knew. Well, I knew before then I actually started pursuing it around the age of 17 uh, by um, auditioning for uh, some of my local productions, uh, musical theater productions, West Side Story, Chorus Line, I played the role of Richie. Uh, so I started uh, with local theater. Uh, through that, I really developed a love for the dance within these productions. Uh, so there I just researched and found my local studios, started taking classes, ballet, modern, jazz, whatever I could get my hands on. Um, so it was early on that I realized that, um, and I was fortunate enough to have some teachers who believed in me and took me under their wing and really worked me. I uh, wouldn't let me backslide, wouldn't let me get away with anything make sure I was technically trained correctly, uh, which pretty much has made me into the man and the teacher that I am today as far as having to offer details, uh, learn how to train a dancer's body. I did uh, one more kind of commercial route, even though I had my formal training. When I moved to Atlanta shortly after college, I uh, started working with uh, some local productions there, and through that I was able to meet up with uh, the production teams of Michael and Janet Jackson, Paul Abdul, Madonna, um, did a short work with TLC, Monica, and some other ones. So I did the commercial route for a while, but I always came back home to my formal training because uh, I always knew I had a love for teaching. So that's pretty much in a roundabout way how I got my start. My mentors are full range. Uh, I owe everything that I am to them. Uh, one of my mentors is uh, Jimmy Locus, who actually became a really close friend of mine. Uh, Jimmy's training is, is extensive, and I just want to follow his footsteps, especially as a male, because in, um, in the dance field, it's hard to find a male figure as far as a mentor, uh, and then a male figure to train another male dancer. Uh, so it's pretty hard to find that. So I was lucky when I was coming up to have a few male figures. Jimmy Locus being one, uh, Kevin Jeff, um, who's a, just a, a idol in the dance, in the concert dance world. Uh, his, his resume is quite extensive. Um, Kevin Jeff, um, Adrian Bolton, Mia Hasaka, Jimmy Locus, um, countless others. There, there's quite a few out there. Dancers don't have a life. <laughs> dance is our life. But the little life that I do have outside of dance, um, I love r and &R. I love to lay in bed and catch a good movie. I love to go and see movies. Um, love exploring the city. Been here for over 15 years and I still feel like a tourist. So I like to get out and explore the city, go you know, catch a happy hour, dinner, hang out with friends, um, play with my dogs. Um, very, very normal stuff. <laughs> I would tell any young dancers out there who are aspiring dancers uh, to one, first and foremost, believe in yourself. Um, never give up, uh, that's the ultimate defeat. Um, not to uh, compete with anyone, um, not to even compete with yourself, uh, but just have a love for what you do. Stay in classes, classes is gonna be your biggest gain, your biggest benefit. And not only classes, but challenge yourself to come outside of your comfort zone to take those classes that you wouldn't normally take. Uh, hip hop dancers can take a ballet class, ballet dancers can take a hip hop class modern class of flamenco, social dance, tumbling, whatever it may be, just to make yourself more marketable um, in this field. Uh, because the industry right now is pretty competitive um, in the sense that dancers are now becoming very cross-trained in their, their different styles and disciplines of dancers. So uh, I would say challenge yourself, believe in yourself, and have a social network of friends who support you, um, who believe in you as well to keep you uplifted when you backslide a little bit. My plans for the future, I would say that's also my hopes for the future, is uh, to stay in this field, um, 
no matter what I do, I definitely know I want to be in the field of education, um, more so teaching. Um, I definitely love to see the new generation of dancers coming up and having a heavy hand in the development of their careers, um, of their technique, of their training, uh, hoping to inspire them in some way, shape, or form that I was inspired. Um, love to perform. As long as the body holds up, I'll still be on somebody's stage somewhere, whoever have me. <laughs> Um, dancing with my current company, DC Contemporary Dance Theater. Um, so it's, it's been a win-win situation. I've still been able to teach as well as perform, and um, that's what I really hope for the future, um, and then I'll see where that takes me.